The 17th century was a hotbed of scientific discovery and invention. You had people like Wren, Boyle and Newton leading the way in scientific discovery. But there's one name that's fallen off the chart essentially, and yet his contribution to science was actually arguably just as important as impressive as those three combined. His contribution um, stretched from uh, experimental to more theoretical stuff. Uh, we have the spring and elasticity law thanks to him. We had concept of astronomy, of uh, timekeeping, and uh, yes, his name is almost forgotten by the general public. The person was Robert Hooke. He was uh, one of the founder of the Royal Society. He was uh, an astronomer, an inventor, an architect, and he loved to pick fights with our scientists, and uh, that is probably one of the reasons why he's so forgotten. Now today we're actually in front of one of the most important buildings in London because Hooke was many things. He was not only a scientist, he was also a surveyor and also an architect as well. And we're going to focus on the Great Fire of London which happened on 2nd of September 1666 because it is that event which destroyed a lot of the city of London and led to the creation of the building behind us, originally known as the Great Pillar but now known as the Monument. The monument uh, is always seen as this big symbol, but it's not just a symbol. Who couldn't uh, just consider, oh, I'm gonna make uh, uh, just this construction for the sake of it. Uh, it is actually an azimuthal telescope. It's a telescope that is constantly pointing upwards. Um, there is a hole that goes through uh, the middle, uh, and it's important because it would allow astronomy of precision. Uh, it's fascinating that in just a generation we went from Galileo working out that uh, the stars uh, were actually very far away on uh, approaches like an azimuthal telescope to work out how distant the star were and by looking upwards uh, and trying to work out how much a star or a few stars were moving it was possible to work out uh, uh, their angle and from the angle the parallax uh, which we give a measurement in parsecs and this it's incredible Hooker thought uh, I need to have uh, an instrument uh, inside this monument now it's actually hard to think that this monument to one of the greatest calamities that ever strike London also has a dual purpose. Because also in the basement of the building, there's a little chamber. Now this chamber, again, not many people knew about at the time, was specifically designed for the use of Ren and Hook to do the aforementioned experiments in. Now there was a slight problem with this. This was supposed to be a finely tuned instrument. However, a finely tuned instrument in the middle of the heaving, bustling city of London had a few problems, notably the traffic. Horses and carts, people running by, loud noises such as drilling and so on really did mess up the experiments which Ren and Hook conducted. So therefore, any kind of experiments that they wanted to do were basically rendered useless. So why don't we know about Hook? Why don't we know about this man done so many great things? And the reason why we don't know about him is because he picked up a fight with uh, probably the greatest uh, known scientist uh, of the time, Isaac Newton. Hello, I'm the man who needs no introduction. I am the pioneer of physics, the discoverer of gravity, and the president of the Royal Society, Isaac Newton. And I'm Robert Hooke. You'd have heard of me by now if it wasn't for this asshole oh, here. Come now, Robbie, whatever did I do to you? You discredited me. You belittled me in public and in private, and you and your friends wrote the most horrible things about me. And you destroyed the only portrait of me. Honey, if you take a look in the mirror, you know I did that for your own good. You ned well. I discovered the cell and made incredible observations of the microcosmos. My picture of the flea is still revered worldwide. I'm sure it helped the people who found your body since you were covered in them when you died. <laughs> I established experiments as the cardinal test for scientific theories. I helped rebuild London after the Great Fire. I was the first to realise that light was a wave and that a species can go extinct. 
I discovered the laws of elasticity and how springs behave. Useful in mattresses like the one I was using to hump your mother. Useful in building high precision clocks and watches. Dragons have the same idea. I had it first! Without my many letters that I wrote to you, you would never have come up with your theory of universal gravitation. Your letters provided no real insight. Seriously, darling, you gave me no help. As I wrote to you before, if I've seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Oh, you bitch. Isaac, why don't you tell your adoring fans about how you extracted scientific information from the Bible? Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you want them to know about this? It isn't another personal project like your experiments with alchemy. Don't cross that line. What line? It's, it's not like you spent 30 years trying to make the Philosopher's Stone now, do you? I will take my proverbial apple and shove it so far up your ass. They'll need my microscope to find every piece of you when I'm done with you! <laughs> Galileo of the telescope and Bohemian Rhapsody fame. As you can tell by those two, science is a very messy business, it's a very human business. It can't be helped. And to those who say that death is stopping science, I said, and yet it moves. Isaac Newton, obviously Hooke's greatest rival, was a great scientist but also a man who harboured a bit of a grudge. Now certainly their history was long, it was complicated and certainly very messy. Some historians have actually referred to Newton as a bit of a miserable bastard. And certainly when he um, overtook the running of the Royal Society, it seemed he actually personally endeavoured on a programme to eradicate Robert Hooke and his contributions to the Royal Society for the decades that he worked there in one fell swoop. So, you see, in the um, scientific world, we still know about Robert Hooke. The law of elasticity of springs is still named after him. He managed to draw and describe what was in the micro world. And uh, yes, none of his contributions were uh, revolutionary. This was, this was unfortunate. This was why Newton was capable of uh, pretty much destroying uh, most of his contribution and even burn down his only portrait. You could argue that perhaps Hooke was a little bit too good at everything. You know, whereas Wren was the architect, Newton was the, um, the, the scientist. Hooke was many things. You know, this was not only a man who did architecture and stuff. He also invented things like the sash window. There was li literally nothing that this man couldn't do. But again, maybe that was to his detriment, and that made um, Newton's job of removing him from history all the more easier. But let's not forget, you know, never mind the likes of Wren, and never even mind the likes of Newton. It's Hooke who was one of the true geniuses of science in the 17th century.